Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here. So the Pocophone F1 from Xiaomi is a device that got a lot of attention when it launched because of its price point. It has amazing specs for the price tag. So this thing launched for the equivalent of like $300 US in India and it was just, I mean, that that's a price point that gets a lot of eyeballs. So I've been using this for a little while and I thought I'd give you my thoughts on this phone. So the specs of this phone are fantastic. It has a lot of the features of flagship phones while being very competitively priced. It's not every day that you see a Snapdragon 845 with liquid cooling and a 4,000 milliamp hour battery for $300. The screen is high res, it's got a headphone jack, micro SD. This thing is packed with great features. Now when you hold it, it's a nice weight. It's comfortable to hold. It doesn't have any weird curvature or sharp edges to the device. It's a great phone to hold. The plastic, however, feels cheap. I hate using that word because cheap implies like, I mean, there's a lot of negative connotation to that word, but it just doesn't feel particularly premium. When you hold other devices like an aluminum or a glass backed phone, it just, after using this for a week and switching back to a OnePlus, even just picking up a OnePlus 6, which isn't like a super premium phone, but it has good material design, it feels so much more elegant and just more polished of a product. The plastic on this device is noticeably less premium. When you pick it up, you know that it's a plastic device. Now, I do like the fact that it's plastic for a couple reasons. One, it keeps the cost down, but two, on the OnePlus 6, so this is something I've been using for a while, when you drop an aluminum phone, forget about the fragility of glass, just the frame can dent quite easily. I dropped this on the bathroom floor, it's now dented and it looks, well, it's not a big deal, but it dents. You drop this at that same height, it wouldn't even leave a mark on the plastic. That's just the nature of a plastic phone. It's more resilient to stuff like that. Uh, other things I like, the face unlock up front, it's a fast unlock and it has an infrared light for nighttime use. I also like the stereo speakers and honestly, that was surprising me. I did not expect these to have stereo speakers. Like when I looked at the original spec sheet, I just, my mind didn't even think that it would have stereo speakers and they sound good. They're loud, they're stereo, and well, I like stereo speakers on my phone. I also like the battery life. It's a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Still not a comfortable two day battery, but you can easily do a full day of heavy use on a single charge. The screen, it's an IPS screen, not an OLED. So the colors aren't as vibrant. The blacks aren't as black. Like they're just not super inky. You can tell that it's an IPS panel, but it's a really good IPS panel. This is an aspect of the phone that I thought they would cheap out on. The Poco phone is like $200 cheaper than the OnePlus 6. The OnePlus 6 has a better screen, it's more vibrant, it's an OLED panel, but the Poco phone has an amazing screen for the money. It's bright, it's pretty color accurate, and I wouldn't expect a screen like this on a $300 phone. The notch, however, is big. I think it's actually bigger than the iPhone notch, and there is a pretty sizable chin on the bottom. It's not an ugly look or anything, it's just compared to other flagship devices that have like a Snapdragon 845, those are bigger, but I mean, for 300 bucks, I let it slide. The notification light's actually on the bottom, and this actually took me a while to get used to. I think it's because all the other Android phones I've used has had the notification light up top, but this phone has it on the bottom, just above the USB-C port, so you just have to train your eye to look down there instead of up top for that light. Uh, there are some other deficiencies. The big one for me is the lack of NFC. So this phone does not support NFC payments, and I guess it depends on where you live and what you do with your phone. I'm someone that uses Google payments pretty regularly. I live in Canada. Most of the retailers out there support NFC payments, so this phone doesn't have it. I can't use it, which is a bummer for me. But I understand like the market that this phone was originally intended for, maybe they don't have a lot of NFC enabled stuff. So it would have been nice for this phone to have NFC, but it doesn't. Uh, the camera is also expectedly weak. I'm not bothered by it. I've been using a lot of budget phones recently, particularly the OnePlus 6, which also doesn't have an amazing camera, but the Pocophone F1 has a noticeably worse camera, particularly in low light. So for daylight photos, it's fine. The camera launch is fast, the focusing is fast, but for low light photos, the Pocophone has quite a bit of grain in them. Okay, software, it's running Xiaomi's EMUI. I don't love the software, it's just personal preference. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, and it has an app drawer, which is a little different for a Xiaomi phone, but I just don't love the software. I'll probably run a launcher on this phone. So the Paco Phone F1 is an incredible value at $300. It's gonna be very difficult to get a better phone for that kind of money. That being said, it's actually very difficult to get it at 300 bucks. I think realistically speaking, if you're gonna buy this in North America, you're gonna have to spend like 350, maybe 400 bucks to get this phone just because of import taxes and buying it from Asian websites and stuff. It's still a good phone at $400, just, just not a steal of a product. Um, the brand Pocophone, I think they have a bright future. This is like the first phone. Xiaomi did a great job on this thing. And yeah, if you're interested in this phone, and you have 300 bucks and you're wondering if it's worth it, 
It absolutely is. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this phone, this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.